It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of March 20th, 1992. We've got five movies to look at today, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. And we'll start off with the first movie that we have here, probably the best of the newest releases that came out this week, and that is, of course, Michael Douglas and Sharon Stone in the erotic thriller Paul Verhoeven's Basic Instinct. Now, we've kind of talked about erotic thrillers in the past couple of years. Uh, most of them have not been very good, and I've always brought back this movie in particular because, really, it is probably the best erotic thriller that we've ever is, that's ever come out, honestly. One of the best ones, at, at least. But, um, yeah, in terms of what the movie was trying to do, it was trying to tell a story, but also be it's also tantalized a, little, a lot of sex in there. This is one of the prime examples of a movie that really really stood the, has stood the test of time kind of because it's a movie that's held up over 30 years later it's a movie that isn't afraid to be isn't afraid to go as far as it can go and it isn't afraid to tell a good story here there's a good story to tell here there's a good mystery around this around this because honestly you can look at this and the trailers kind of make you fig figure it's going to be Sharon Stone who's the killer and really that's not quite the case the twist in here is actually kind of a, kind of good. I actually like what they kind of did with that. And the movie also benefits from the performances by Sharon Stone and Michael Douglas. Both of them have this great chemistry. They work off each other so well. And Sharon Stone really does show that she does have a lot of good acting chops here. She really plays this temptress role very well. Uh, the sex scenes are legitimately well done. They're they're shot very well. They do the, they do the job that they need to do. Of course, the most famous scene in the movie is a little bit gratuitous, but you know what? In terms of what the character is doing in that scene, it works for her. It works well enough. It works to the story, and it does make you get more invested into what's going on with the story and these characters. And like I said, the mystery here is really good. There's a good mystery involved here. Not everything about it works. Some of it's a very dated. Like, it feels very... Some of the character development isn't as strong, but the performances are what make it stand out more. And also the the great score by Jerry Goldsmith, uh, the editing in here, the cinematography by Jean de Bont. Um, a lot of elements here do really do work. It's a movie that's very v much giving you what you asked for and then some. It does. It's the mystery aspect is very good. You get so invested in what's going on and you do wonder how it's going to end. And it does a very good job of handling all those fronts. It's a movie that's really good. I can't recommend this movie enough. This is probably one of the few erotic thrillers that I would highly praise because it is really good. It's not just a TNA show. 
it actually is a movie that's showing you something more than what you think it's going to show you. And it's a really good film. It's a very good film. I can't recommend this movie enough. Definitely check out Basic Instinct if you can. So, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Woody Allen's Shadows and Fog. <laughs> Expect the killer to strike again tonight. The killer? What killer? The strangler. What strangler? The maniac. What kind of explanation could you possibly have? You're naked in the closet with my sister. We're getting closer to the zero hour. Yes, so, so what do I do? Don't you know? No, everybody has a plan. I'm the only one in town that, that doesn't know what he's doing. Mr. Spiro is on the verge of revealing the killer. What, 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 what does this man say? He doesn't... If anyone is killed or hurt as a result of your incompetence, no, I don't know enough to be incompetent. The men are looking for you. Kleiman's here! Here he is! Kleiman's here! Can you get out and die? So here's kind of another example of a movie that's trying to be two different things, but really it can't, it can't do it in this case. And this movie, it's it, you can tell the movie's trying to go for some kind of German expressionism parody, but it's also trying to mix it with a screenplay by Woody Allen, and his typical st writing style doesn't really fit with the movie here, and it just, it definitely shows on screen. There's not really a whole lot there in terms of, like, weight or entertainment value here compared to Allen's other works. It just feels very forgettable and really just not enjoyable in the slightest whatsoever. And this is a, this is one of those movies that has a great cast involved. There's a huge cast involved in this one. Besides Alan, you have Kathy Bates, you got Philip Bosco, John Cusack, Mia Farrow, Fred Gwynn, Julie Kavner, William H. Macy, Madonna, John Malkovich, Kenneth Mars, Kate Nelligan, Donald Pleasance, James Rebhorn, John C. Riley, Wallace Shawn, Kurtwood Smith, David Ogden Stiers, Lily Tomlin. A big cast involved in this, but really, there's unfortunately, there's just nothing there for anybody to do. I mean, it's a movie that really is just, it's just another Woody Allen movie, but it's not the, t the type of Woody Allen movie that makes a great Woody Allen film. It's one of those movies where it just feels like he's just making a movie to have another movie come out. And um, also, no, this is actually one of the, la the last one that he did for Orion Pictures, because... Around this time, Orion Pictures was going into bankruptcy, and so most of his films moved over to uh, Columbia Pictures at that point, because he'd have another movie out this year called Husbands and Wives, which would receive much better praise than this movie did. And uh, we'll get to that one when we get to that one, but as far as this movie goes, yeah, it's just not a very good movie. It's a very underwhelming film, not one of Woody Allen's best films, unfortunately, so... Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie that we have here. It's another one of those ensemble screwball comedies. We've gotten a couple of them in the last couple of weeks. Um, we had uh, Once Upon a Crime, and then we had Blame on the Bellboy. Uh, will the third time be the charm with noises off? Let's find out. Once upon a time, in a place of make-believe, there was a little theater company that couldn't. Sorry, folks. Am I doing something wrong? They couldn't get their cues right. What is going on? They couldn't get their lines straight. We only just managed to fit it in. I mean, with only just do it. I mean... They couldn't even stand on their own two feet. Are you all right, Barry? Don't panic, don't panic! He's all right! Oh, well done. Until a director was hired... Hold it! Stop. 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 Hold it! ...to take control. God said, hold it! He started with the basics. We know you've worked over in London in some very classy places where they let you make the play up as you go along. But we don't want that kind of thing here, love. Develop their talent. Would it perhaps be better if I came on a little earlier? Right, only, only a little sooner, a shade earlier, like yesterday. Nurtured their creativity. Let me just say one thing. No. Could I ask another dumb question? No. And guided their every move. Don't fall down, Tim. We may not be insured. Now if he can only get them to Broadway in one piece. I'm starting to know what God felt like. And what did he feel like? Very pleased he'd taken his value. They just might have a happy ending. It's like the band playing on as the Titanic sank. Touchstone Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present a Peter Bogdanovich picture. Is it a party? Noises off. I've worked with a lot of directors, but I've never met one who is so totally and absolutely, I don't know, beautifully put, Gary. Yeah, not so much. I mean, 
I'll give it credit. It's a little bit better than Once Upon a Crime. I blame it on the Bow Boy, but that's really not saying a whole lot here. You've got a cat. You've got a great cast in here, including Michael Caine, Carol Burnett, Christopher Reeve, John Ritter, Mary Lou Henner, uh, Nicolette Sheridan, Julie Haggerty, Marklin Baker. This is actually this actually also has uh, Denholm Elliott in one of his last roles before his death in October. Uh, it's directed by Peter Bogdanovich too. I get it's it's one of those odd comedies where I think they probably thought that Peter Bogdanovich could make a comedy that would equate to a success to his other works. You know, this is the man who also did stuff like The Last Picture Show, uh, What's Up Doc, Paper Moon, Nickelodeon, Mask. We also we already talked about Texas Phil in a previous episode. But um, the movie overall just comes up very short. There are funny moments in here, and I think, but I think they're very few and far between. I think the movie tries a little too hard to capture the spirit of the play that this is based off of, the Broadway musical that this is based off of. I don't even, t I don't, not even a Broadway musical, the Broadway version of this. But, but I'll give it this though. Like I said, it does have funny moments in it. They're very few and far between though. The cast does okay, but the biggest problem with the film is that the story never finds the common ground to make itself work on the whole. Like, how do I put this? Try to imagine Birdman before Birdman is only not as well put together and without those breakthrough brilliant performances that ma that Birdman had and a much lighter sense of comedy on it. In a way, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of the Broadway equivalent to Soap Dish, but Soap Dish was another movie that was much better than this. So, I don't hate this movie, but overall, it's not... It's, it doesn't really have enough there to really recommend it. Some funny moments there. The cast does what it can with the script given to them, but it's definitely one that's not going to hurt you to skip over. So that's uh, Noises Off. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie that we have here, and that is Edward II. And share this kingdom with thy dearest friend. In 1593, Christopher Marlowe wrote one of the jewels of the Elizabethan theater. No love so far. In 1992, the acclaimed director Derek Jarman brings to the screen an Edward II like you've never seen before. For now, my lord, the king regards me not, but dotes upon the love of Gaveston. Is it not queer that he is thus bewitched? Swinton, winner of the Best Actress Award at the Venice Film Festival. Derek Jarman's film of Christopher Marlowe's Edward II. So I guess you could. this is kind of a modernized version of the story by Christopher Marlowe. It does say that it is staged in a postmodern style using a mix of contemporary and medieval props, sets and lighting and all that kind of stuff. And there is more of a focus on the on the gay content here. It's more brought into the focus of this movie, notably by adding a homosexual se sex scene and depicting Edward's army as gay rights protesters. So, I guess I guess it is kind of a modernized story. But unfortunately, I haven't seen this movie, so I can't really comment on it. But I have seen some of the reviews on here. It's got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, so I'm guessing it's a movie that's very well regarded as a good film. But uh, I'm not too familiar with this director's work, Derek Yar Derek Yarman. I think this was one of his last films he directed before he's before he um I can't re let me just see real quick did he die or did he well he died about three years after this movie came out so I guess this was one of his last films he made so 
I have no, I really do not know anything about his work, so, um, like I said, I can't really comment on this too much, but, um, it came out this weekend, so I might as well bring it up here, so, that's, uh, Edward II, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our last movie here, and that is the documentary American Dream. We've got to give up 23% wages and 30% cut in benefits when the company's making $30 million. My husband and I am proud to be a wife of a hog cutter. I'm proud of the products, but I don't like the way they're treating my family or anyone else who's ever worked for that plant. The verbal company put us into a corner and we were going to come out after. We're going to be on strike uh, as of midday. They called out the National Guard trying to help maintain order. This is your community, not two or three of them greedy executives. It's a question of morality because I was brought up that you do not cross the picket line no matter what. You union people, we ain't crossing no picket line. So this is a documentary about the unsuccessful Hormel strike of 1985 and 1986 where I guess this union went on strike and in in the end it failed miserably to get the, to get what exactly what they wanted or at least that's what this trailer is implying or and that's what it is on the Wikipedia page. This is another one of those movies I haven't seen before but um it does very much intrigue me. I do like this idea that we get to see how these people try to try to strike to get whatever they want in this union. And how does the, how does the company handle it? And you see the two sides go, going at each other. And it is a very it is a very unique looking trailer from what I see here for a movie that does look very interesting. And and um, yeah, it does look like an interesting documentary. Uh, I need to look more into the details on this particular strike and see what happened. But judging by this trailer, there is a lot of interesting ideas here, interesting situations here that I do kind of want to see need more about this is one i might definitely check out later on down the road but as it is right now it's a pretty good looking trailer it's a movie that i'm very curious about so maybe one day i might actually do a review of it on the website but um yeah it's definitely got my interest in it um american dream so on that note we wrap up another edition of time about the movies uh next time we meet we'll wrap up march of 92 with another great comedy from the early part of the year wesley snipes and woody harrelson and white man can't jump we also have Rodney Dangerfield in the soccer comedy Ladybugs, uh, Moira Kelly and D.B. Sweeney in the ice skating comedy The, Cut the Cutting Edge. Uh, we also have The Power of One, Ruby, and also Roadside Profits. So six movies to look at next time, and we will definitely delve into those films. So with that said, though, thank you guys for watching. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, as always, take care.